Okay, this would be my next project. It is of course a Commodore 64 inspired keyboard. I designed the case with Unshape and split the model in uh, three pieces so I won't need any support when 3D printing. As always this video is not uh, scripted, is not uh, prepared, I'm not showing you only the good bits. I'm just recording live the build process and I'm sure I'm going to do a lot of mistakes. Let's get started. I 3D printed the first two pieces and they came really well. Now I'm going to glue them together with the help of uh, these pins and some two components epoxy glue. I have to be very fast because the glue cures in about 3 minutes so I don't have much working time. I did a dry test fit before adding the glue and it was perfect, but now I have this pretty nasty seam over here, I'm not entirely sure why, uh, but anyway nothing I cannot fix with some putty. This time I'm using a pretty common automotive epoxy putty, this one too cures very fast so I have to act uh, quickly. This is the result after two coats of putty and some sanding. Uh, there's no trace of the seam anymore and I believe it looks pretty good. Next step is to apply multiple layers of filler primer, sanding between each of them. If I want to hide the 3D printing layers line I can't rush this phase and the end smoothness will be proportional to my patience in this process. This is the result after one coat of filler primer. It is not bad but I want it smoother so I'm probably going to add at least two more layers. So another coat of primer and another sanding session done and we are getting close. Unfortunately sanding PLA is not easy because it gets soft quickly with heat so you have to sand slowly and it takes a lot of time. Anyway, I'm applying another couple of layers of primer and I'll call it a day. And this is the end result. The primer has this nice yellowed old Commodore 64 color, but I'm going for a new old stock of white, so next step would be spray painting. Of course, after two arid months without rain, today it is raining, so I can't actually paint the case yet and I'll work on the PCB instead. Let's start with the stabilizers. I have these TX stabilizers because I'm told it's what all the cool kids use nowadays and I wanted to try them and see what the fuzz is about. I placed all the stabilizers, the two unit seems uh, to be fine, nice and smooth, but the 625 feels a little scratchy despite the lubricant. It's like the wire is just a tiny bit smaller than it should be, but I'll try them later with a switch and kick up. It finally stopped raining and I was able to paint the case. It came out better than I anticipated. This pearl white is simply perfect and I'm so pleased with how it came out. But the joy fades quickly because this is when I realized that I am an idiot and the PCB doesn't support 1.25 modifiers on the right hand. It is a hot swap PCB but it supports some options like a split uh, backspace and I thought it also supported 125 modifiers, but I was looking at the wrong diagram and it doesn't actually support that. So plan B is to use a solder in PCB. 
This is still by Polarity Works. It has Bluetooth and supports basically any 65% layout. So next step would be soldering the switches. Uh, before that though, I'm going to mount these gate run uh, stabilizers. When I bought the new PCB, I noticed uh, these stabilizers that look exactly the same color of the keyboard. So I couldn't resist and I purchased them. They may look good, but it took me quite some time to lube and tune them. Out of the box they are very tight and scratchy, but at the end I was able to make them work. And it's finally time to solder the clicked switches. I'm looking forward to trying them, they are very expensive and they should come with a very nice retro Alp switch-like feel. We'll see. Last thing to do is to paint these 3D printed fake stickers. I printed them with a resin printer and they will give the keyboard a nice finishing touch. They came out okay, I think. Now just a drop of super glue and we are done. The cherry on the cake will be, of course, the power LED. The PCB supports back lightning, so all the switches have an option for a pass through LED. Um, all I have to do is to route a couple of wires to this spot and it should be good to go. I had a few red LEDs, but uh, I don't know the specifications, so I burned a couple of them already. Uh, this time I'm soldering a beefy resistor and it should finally be fine. If I'm not mistaken, ground should be the square lead. Since I have a lot of space inside the case, I want to add a battery to use the keyboard without wires. The PCB comes with a 1200mAh uh, super thin uh, battery, but I want to replace it with a 3700mAh one that should grant hopefully a couple of months of wireless autonomy. The two batteries have different connectors, so I need to do some surgery first.
I had to file slightly this spacer here because it was rubbing on the function key, but overall it came out wonderfully. The look and feel is very Commodore 64 and the retro SA keycaps are simply perfect for this build. Let's see if it works. Ah, look at that, it's gorgeous. So, how do ZL ClickIt switches perform and are they worth their premium price? Uh, first of all, I believe these switches require a very solid build. I'm not sure a 3D printed case is their best habitat, but uh, let's hear them uh, before jumping to conclusion. They are very loud for sure, possibly one of the loudest modern switch I've tried, but again, this case acts a little like a loudspeaker. Personally, I like very clicky switches, so I like how they sound, but of course sound is not everything about a switch. They remind me a little of Alp switches, uh, this is a Matthias clicky switch, The clickids are heavier and louder and sturdier, but I'm not sure they're actually better. All the resistance is at the very top of the travel. When you pass the click point, they become very soft, making them pretty fast switches. That also means that all the force you apply to overcome the initial resistance is transferred to a very strong bottom down because past that initial point there's actually nothing slowing down the travel. So, do I like them? Uh, they are very fun switches and I think they are perfect on this build. They give the keyboard a sort of vintage feel, uh, which is exactly what I was looking for, but honestly I would not use them on my daily driver. They are certainly unique, and if you like experimenting with new switches, this is something you definitely need to try, but otherwise maybe there are better alternatives. Yeah, so this would be all for today, I hope you like my Retro Deck 65 and possibly you found my work inspirational for your next build. Um, see you next time, ciao!